For the Rita mission, I had to deal with a choice. The choice of whether or not to go to the Florida Keys for the first possible landfall and then head to Texas. I chose to just head to Texas, which was the right thing to do considering that the Keys could have potentially trapped me, keeping me from the landfall along the Texas coast. I would also work this mission alone, for the most part, as Jesse and Mike were both unavailable. Of course my trip would lead me right past Gulfport, Mississippi, and I had to stop in to see how things were progressing, now roughly three weeks after Katrina. So here we are in Gulfport, Mississippi. I was here for the landfall. I was up at the Best Western, and I actually set some remote cameras down here uh, that recorded the storm surge, but they washed away, wow. oddly enough. Wow. And here we are a little over three weeks later, What's your name, please? Sergeant Rush, Elton Rush. Nice Green to Bell, meet you. From uh, Maryland National Guard. Maryland? Yes, sir. Goodness gracious. What do you think about this? Well, a lot of families are really <laughs> devastated by the destruction. Um, some families are still trying to recover from the, uh, from the hurricane. Uh, we've been out earlier in other areas, uh, Couché, Couché, Mississippi, where we helped out um, ice and water and food. And um, people are just really, they're really, they're soldiers. They're really toughening it up and they're trying to bounce back. It's tough to bounce back though after something this massive. And you haven't even seen the waterfront yet. Wait till you see that. It's just unbelievable down there. I can imagine so. In New Orleans, it's like a whole other disaster in and of itself. And now we've got Hurricane Rita headed towards Texas, which is where I'm going. The city had a very strict curfew in effect and I could not really see anything since it was dark. So I moved on, continuing my trek towards Texas. I was heading for Beaumont to stop for the night. Believe it or not, I drove from Lake City, Florida all the way to Beaumont, Texas in a single day. This includes the hour or so stop that I had in Gulfport, plus a stop in Foley, Alabama to get a repair done to the Tahoe. After some much needed sleep in Beaumont, I went southwest towards Galveston. People in the region were taking Rita very seriously, prompting a massive evacuation. After all, Galveston has an infamous hurricane history. Just an amazing sight here in Galveston, Texas. As you can see, just a ton of media interests here, camped out, set up, as we wait for Hurricane Rita. Quite a famous sculpture here. As the world watches and waits, it's like a big countdown. Galveston, Texas, where a state of emergency is in effect. Category 5, Hurricane Rita heading this way. It is moving to the West Coast. The media presence was the most I have ever seen. All of the major networks and even international media were covering Rita. I even met and talked with CNN's Anderson Cooper for a little while. I left Galveston and went south towards Lake Jackson and Freeport. The official forecast track showed Rita making landfall close to Freeport at this point, 
So I figured I would avoid the evacuation traffic by going south and at least get some sleep while waiting on Rita's next move. As far as the eye could see were vehicles lined up along Highway 288 heading north from the central Texas coast. By early the next morning the track forecast had changed again, now pointing towards a landfall closer to the Texas-Louisiana border. This was good news for the people along the central Texas coast. Lake Jackson is right in here somewhere. Okay. Okay, Freeport's down here. There's Galveston. Lake Jackson's right in here. Okay. And there's Houston. All right. So here is where the hurricane is forecast to hit. Okay. At the Galveston? Way up here. Okay. Yeah, 64, 66. There's the eye. Okay. You never get never get above 70 miles per hour. Okay. You can handle that. Okay. The storm surge won't be anywhere near here. It's all going to be up here. Okay. You know, the hurricane shouldn't... There's always a small chance it'll come in here. Okay. You can't just completely ignore it. But it's for sure it. it's going that side. You know, there's nothing for sure because, you know... <laughs> God knows about it. But the chances of it just coming into Freeport and, and just devastating this area are getting much smaller. Okay. And, uh, but you're still going to have some strong wind and heavy rain, but you, know, you live away from the water, okay. you know, right? You yeah. don't live near, the, near water, the water, so you don't have to leave. Don't go get in the traffic okay. and sit there when you are not near the water where the worst danger is. Stay in your house okay. and it'll pass by. And where are we? We're way down here. Oh, that's good news. Yeah. That's really good news. Because Fairly tropical storm force winds coming around and an offshore flow to keep the surge out of here. It's getting a lot better. A oh. lot, lot worse for Louisiana, a lot better for you. I waited until nightfall and for the evacuation traffic to thin out, which it did. I left the Lake Jackson area for what would hopefully be my final destination for the landfall, Beaumont, Port Arthur. football in the wind? Doing a good job? Let's see it. I slept better the night of the 22nd than I have in a long time on these missions. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of getting sleep. That sleep would have to carry me through the next 24 hours, as it was now time to get to work. Rita was on a course for Texas and Louisiana. I made my way over to Port Arthur and had quite a following of media with me. Journalists from the Associated Press, as well as Univision and the London Telegraph were shadowing me, covering my work for an international audience. The rain and wind were picking up, but we still had plenty of time to work. It was very strange to see the refineries all around me. Indeed, the world held its breath, hoping that the U.S. oil industry was not hit too hard by this latest Gulf hurricane. I then began to deploy the remotely operated cameras. Port Arthur was first, at a marina along Sabine Lake. A few little things, but almost everything. Okay, here's Mark, you can see him right now. Sitting his little, little new toy here with a Dell. Yep, these are great Dell laptops. They do everything I need them to do. This is, the, uh, this is the box right here, the storm case, we have the battery, the laptop, and uh, it handles all the transmission of these live video cameras. Look how fast this is in the middle of a hurricane and we got fast wireless internet access. It's just incredible. This is going hurricane live net number uh, number two. So after this we're going to have three out of four cameras running. During Katrina I only had two running. So already we're going to be ahead of the game.
Even though I was working the mission alone, I did have some help. One of the gentlemen from the London Telegraph helped me to move the heavy storm case into position. Here is the actual view from that remote camera. As you can see, it had a very clear shot of the marina here along the lake. If there was going to be a significant storm surge, I would not miss it. Only time would tell. I like to use time lapse to show the motion of the clouds, which you can see here streaking across the sky. As night fell, the camera caught several of the power flashes in the distance. Some were quite violent, a result of the strong winds of Rita moving ashore. I also set up a camera on top of the Hampton Inn along I-10 in West Beaumont. The general manager allowed me to access the roof to deploy the camera. It was a good idea since I would not be up there risking my life to get any video of the hurricane. Not too much happened that we could see. Unfortunately for the sake of exciting video, Rita hit at night, hiding most of its fury under the cloak of darkness. I remained in the Port Arthur area until after dark. Conditions were still manageable for the time being. The view from the Martin Luther King Bridge looking down onto the city was simply incredible. It looked like a war was being waged. As the night went on, the flashes continued almost constantly. Rita was pounding the area hard with winds that were beginning to break trees and plunge the city into darkness. Seeing the refineries in the distance was surreal against the low cloud deck of the hurricane sky. I had found a very large field upwind from one of the refineries and decided to hang tough there to record the best wind readings that I could. I felt safe enough considering that I was not near the storm surge zone. As the worst of Rita moved over me, I just sat back and took it all in. I'm in the eye now, I'm watching two seagulls 
just sitting here on the pavement resting. It's as calm as it could be, just a light rain. The eye of Rita passed right over me and I immediately went out into Port Arthur to survey the damage. Flooding was evident in most areas, though not as bad as I had expected. I considered setting up in Cameron, Louisiana and felt very glad that I had not followed through on those plans. Like Waveland, Mississippi, Cameron was devastated by the storm surge. We'll take a look at that later. By sunrise, it was clear that Rita had caused significant damage across the region. Although Galveston and Houston were spared the worst, towns like Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange, Cameron, and Lake Charles were all heavily damaged. The response to Rita in the wake of Katrina and its lessons learned was immediate. I can only hope that that same response has continued in the weeks and months since I was there. You got it, thanks. supposed to be uh, and what areas are we talking about West Lake Sulphur all the surrounding southwest Louisiana areas um, a lot of flooding a lot of flooding a lot of flooding rain or storm surge what do you think rain falling or storm surge pushing in with the wind storm surge I would say gotcha. well, I'm not a meteorologist all right. but we have to go around and stuff like that to, all right to, so this uh, is your means of transportation yeah. right here right <laughs> We got people stranded on a ferry We're, that got pushed up from Cameron, so we're trying to go get them off. Yeah, right. In Cameron and surrounding communities, the devastation was similar to that of Katrina. Entire buildings were wiped off the face of the earth. and always will be amazed at what the power of water, especially moving water, can do. For people all along the Gulf Coast, in the wake of hurricanes like Ivan, Dennis, Katrina, and now Rita, damage from storm surge is becoming a very common scene. We can only hope that the Gulf catches a break from these lethal powers. I am not sure that folks can take much more. With scenes like these, who can blame them?